Hey everyone, just a quick update on the Gigabyte Gaming 7 motherboard that we reviewed recently. The board was good overall, but had a major V-Core issue where Auto V-Core was causing temperatures nearing 100 Celsius with a $160 liquid cooler. That has been fixed. We're going to go over the new results here in this video. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by Corsair and their new 570X Crystal Series case, which has tempered glass on all sides, RGB LEDs in the front fans, and we've reviewed that case. If you're curious, you can hit the link in the description below for more information. So to recap everything with this board, first of all, Buildzoid, after my initial review, we had him post another video that talked about the PCB. So it was a motherboard analysis talking about the VRM components, overall higher quality than some of the competitors like MSI's boards where they use the cheapest vets in China. Gigabyte does a lot better in that regard. Buildzoid overall likes the motherboard. Unfortunately, Auto V-Core was a big issue, and again, we're seeing easily 100 Celsius temperatures with air coolers in the 90s with the Kraken X62 at max RPM, max pump RPM. Luckily, this is easily bypassed. If you're okay with doing manual V-Core, it could have been resolved on day one by manually setting it to something like 1.28 or something like that, which we did and saw a massive immediate improvement as one would expect. We were in contact with Gigabyte about the Auto V Core thing since before the board was launched and KB Lake was even officially out of NDA. So they know about it. They've got a new BIOS version number F4Q, which is available publicly on the website if you have this board or are planning on getting it. It resolves the issue completely. So we've got some new results for you to show the temperature and voltage and power draw difference. We can go through those now. So the new BIOS update has driven the Auto V Core setting down to a completely reasonable 1.2 to 1.24 volts when under the AVX stress testing that we were putting the CPU through. Maximally, we saw 1.28, but that was once. Averaging 1.2 volts means a reduction of about 200 millivolts, so that means a power consumption and temperature reduction, both of which are significantly improved with this BIOS update and we're seeing that without any performance loss on the CPU. So you're not losing performance for this fix. In fact, we're seeing a performance improvement overall. The temperatures now drop about 30 Celsius. There's no more risk of throttling on the CPU, 7700K in this case. Liquid temperatures only report slightly higher in this testing because the ambient, as you'll notice, was a couple degrees higher. So that makes sense. CPU package is what XTU reports for the 7700K, so we can use that for our main unit of measurement and that's at 64 Celsius versus the previous 94 Celsius load temperature under identical conditions, identical coolers, all that stuff. Again, these numbers correspond to a frequency that outputs identical performance between each V-Core setting, but with a much more efficient voltage on the updated test run. As for package power, we're down to 105 to 106 watts average, where we were previously at 133 to 135 watts, and that's just because more volts means more power consumption. So overall, major improvement. The board is now well within acceptable purchasing territory for anyone who was not planning to play with the V-Core setting. If you want to use auto, it's good now. I'm not sure if they'll be shipping with that update for future boards. There's a very strong likelihood that they will be because that's normally what these companies do. But regardless, if you buy the board and it doesn't have the update or you've already bought it, then grab the update, apply it through their easy flash utility. It takes less than two minutes and you'll be good to go. The board is now a pretty good buy in all aspects from our review because that only glaring issue is, it has now been resolved. So same price, all that stuff. I'd still like to see a slight price reduction, but V-Core looks good now. Just a note on how Gigabyte acted during all of this. The way Gigabyte responded and then addressed the issue and then worked with us to further test the issue was perfect. That is how a company should work with media on trying to troubleshoot, uh, fix and release updates and news for an issue with a the product. They didn't try to hide the issue, bury it, and they didn't try to discredit our work. So thank you all for watching. You can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus if you'd like to help us directly. Of course, GamersNexus.net for more information. We have some further information coming up and testing on one of the competitors to this board pretty soon. And many of you have already seen part one of that. So thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.